Hey, it's Singers here, and welcome to Pocket, your daily dose of gaming goodness. Today on the show, we open up the mailbag and attempt to answer some of your viewer questions. But first, the news. Some former Half Brick developers have opened up a new Brisbane-based studio. Pretty great. Uh, that's the name of the studio, pretty great. Uh, but the news is also good. The team includes ex half brick marketing head Phil Larson, art director Hugh Walters, and key creative Luke Muscat. Whilst at half brick, these were some of the great minds behind Fruit Ninja and Jetpack Joyride. So we look forward to seeing what the team develop next. Google's DeepMind computer has gotten even smarter. The artificial intelligence has beaten 49 Atari games, including Breakout, and it learned to do it all by itself. Mimicking the way humans learn, the AI was rewarded each time it beat a level or high score, which encouraged DeepMind to do better itself and have one more go. YouTube gamer Many a True Nerd has completed a permadeath run of Fallout New Vegas without healing. That means no sleeping, no health buffs, and no recovering from radiation. The character build was designed to avoid conflict wherever possible. This understandably cautious playthrough took five months to complete. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. That amazingly is the base game of Fallout New Vegas complete. Impressive. All right, mailbag time. Let's see if we can sneak into the studio downstairs. Hey, big fancy studio and big fancy green screen. Our editor could literally put me anywhere. I could be in space. I could be all, all floaty underwater, you know? Be, I'll be at the Eiffel Tower. Some sort of castle in uh, 19th century Japan. I'm flying! I'm flying! Oh, what a ride. All right, one thing before we get down to proper mailbag business. I wanted to give a shout out to TetrisFan7001. Every day in our YouTube comments, she or he has been listing their favorite Pokemon in order, one per episode. So here's an idea, Tetris fan. If you can get to 100 days and 100 Pokemon, I will record my interpretation of the original Poker Rap. Yeah, and that is definitely something that you definitely want to hear, right? <laughs> also, last week, Gary Chevalier noted the lack of Ned Kelly games. And in our research, we couldn't find any notable entries either. However, Twitter peep Colonica a Melbourne-based game dev showed us that she and her team have actually made a Ned Kelly shooter as part of the 7D FPS game jam back in 2013. There's a free mock level online if you want to check it out. Okay, on to this week's question. First up, this one is from Declan Coyle. Is Pocket filmed in bulk in one day or is it filmed every day over the course of a week? Well, Declan, we shoot Pocket every single day to try and make sure the information in the show is as up-to-date as possible. Sometimes we'll pre-record something. For example, on Monday night, we went to watch the uh, live broadcast of the League of Legends Pro League, which we then featured in Tuesday's show. But for the most part, we shoot, edit, and upload the show on the same day. This next question is from Bob Noon. Can you review Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate? What a good hunting game. Hey Bob Noob, I feel like you've done your own review of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate there. Good job! Barjo and Hex have been playing the game and will be delivering their thoughts in next week's Good Game on Tuesday night. Here's a sneak preview though. This is, I think, the most accessible Monster Hunter game to date. The difficulty ramps up gently and yet the end game is really tough. No matter how good you are, you're going to find something to challenge you. Above all, this is about the boss fights and the monsters just have so much personality. Learning their moves, honing your skills, optimizing your gear. From the meta to the micro, it's easy to get obsessed. Mm, seems like they like it. Now, to this from James. I just read about the UK band 65 Days of Static scoring No Man's Sky and wanted to know if you had any opinions on game devs pairing up with artists of other mediums to create a more involved experience. Well, James, I always say if the talent is there, use it. That is a lie, I have never actually said that before. But it's true, games are made up of so many complex parts. Game engines, art design, story, and of course, music. Bringing all of these elements together is a vital part of a game's success. So pairing up with talented and passionate people from other industries makes perfect sense to me. Though sometimes the result isn't so wonderful. Time for one more question, I think. This one from Fractalad. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Is that Captain Planet riding a horse in the background? Yes, Fractalad, yes it is! 
Well, that is all the time we have for today's episode. Keep the feedback and the questions coming. Until tomorrow, see ya!